chip off the old block. Looking at you, got me thinking about my old pops. How I'm gonna navigate and get you through the road. A lot of people hit us up, man. Even Ellen. Ellen's like whatever like team mm -hmm. it or something yeah. was like hey you know like we really want to da -da -da -da. well are you an Ellen fan or not yeah I'm like yeah <laughs> you know what I'm saying like <laughs> I am you know what I mean but I'm not like I'm not gonna like front and act like you know like I die for you know what I'm saying for an opportunity to be on the Ellen show because it yeah. like our goals are different you know what I'm saying like and it's not like I'm not trying to be prideful or like arrogant, but it it really comes a place comes from a place of like, man, I really do know who I am and I know what I'm doing. Hey, what's good, folks? D Anthony here from the Dad Vlog, and today I first off, hello, and I know that it's been a little while since we've done this, but with everything that's going on, the other protests, all the, the coronavirus stuff, you know, trying to get our home in order, it's just a lot going on, but. But I think that today, this episode should make up for what wasn't uploaded the last week or so. Today, we have a very special guest by the name of Belief. It's a rapper, YouTuber, all around creative. Some of the things that we talk about in this particular episode, being or not being a Christian rapper, an interesting perspective on the mindset of a creative. And we go over his viral video um, in which he decided to actually decline an, an opportunity to go on to the Ellen DeGeneres show. He also opens up about intimacy in his marriage. Very interesting. Hope you guys enjoy. Oh. Bro, are you a rapper or are you like a YouTuber? What's the what's your what's your title? What do you title yourself as? Um, I, I hate titles, man. You know what I'm saying? And so it depends on what room I'm in. If I'm in a room with yeah. a bunch of YouTubers, I'm an MC. But if I'm in a room with a bunch of rappers, I'm a YouTuber. You know what I'm, I'm saying? A YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I was trying to, I was trying to figure out because when I knew you as, it was like a rapper. Then you got the YouTube thing going on. So I feel like if you're a rapper, turn YouTuber is cool. But if you're a YouTuber, <laughs> turn you're a YouTuber turned rapper is a little like yeah. Yeah. So I started out mm -hmm. in hip hop. And the cool thing is that it's not really like I'm not either or. I, I just make I make content I make stuff. You know what I'm saying? And um what happens is when I'm telling a story through the YouTube channel, often there's like this hole where the narrative just kinda stops and music helps push that narrative along. So I'm able to like explain a lot more via uh, you know, just rhyme. You know what I'm saying? Um or just tell the story or just let the mood sit in 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 song and so um i'm i'm whatever the the moment calls for you know what i'm saying i, I really don't put myself in a box like that i can i can do both yeah but so initially you were uh like the the christian hip-hop artist right for sure so yeah. so so are you like just completely completely done with that title you know that you know people always ask me like oh man are you christian hip-hop are you just are you just a hip hop you know what i'm saying yeah um you know there for me i would i would hate for someone who is a believer to come to me expecting to hear like scripture in my rhymes you know what i'm saying and so mm -hmm. i don't call myself a christian hip hop artist and i don't mind the title but i don't call myself that because i know really really good christian hip hop artists who are way better and do a better job of it you know what i'm saying um you know, there's Bizzle, there's Eshawn Burgundy, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's people like that, you know, or John Keith. Like, it's so many other people who do a better job that I don't, like, I don't call myself that. But I don't mind if anyone puts me in that bubble. I don't really think I fit in the Christian genre only. But what's a, how, how are you a better Christian rapper? What, is your message more focalized if you're a better Christian rapper or... No, I, I'm not a better Christian rapper. I'm saying there's other people who are better. No, no, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. When you say yeah. other people are better, are well, the messages I mean, crafted better? Or? No, well, I feel like, you know, when people say Christian rap, what they're saying is that this is uplifting music, which I feel like my music is, but that also, like, always points to Christ in every, like, every verse. You know what I'm saying? Where if, mm -hmm. I, if I make an album... You, I might talk about depression, suicide, you know, abuse, and you might not hear Jesus until like the eighth or ninth 
or 10th uh, song. You know what I'm saying? So to say I'm a Christian artist, I mean, Christian rapper, it might be a little misleading to people who are solely focused on like spreading the gospel through each rhyme. Yeah, yeah. I remember um, I remember when Lecrae, Lecrae like tweeted something. It was something like, you know, Christian is my faith, not my genre or something like that. And from that point, it's like, the whole community just kind of like kind of disowned them. So it's either, I feel like with the Christian hip hop thing is interesting because it's like they either really love you or they like shun you and never talk to you again because you said something that wasn't Jesus related. Yeah, you know man. I mean? You know, for me, it's very limiting. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, you know, there are some people who get it and some people who don't. So I just rock with the people who get it. You know, um, when, when you are a figure like Lecrae, and you say something like that, it's like a slap in the face to people who, you know, supported you the whole time because they use that Christian hip hop label as their flag and their banner. That's what they want to be known as what that's what they that's what they support. And it's almost like, yeah, we Christian and we rap and that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I think Lecrae was trying to cross over at that point. It was very difficult for him to like that wasn't really a smart way to do it. You know what I'm saying? And he's talked about it before. But yeah. um, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not speaking on his behalf, but I do believe that, um, you know, I understand, you know, I understand. And, and to people who are believers who rock, rock with me, I, I'm with it. You know, um, I, I, I do think I'm going to not I'm going to be more focused on the gospel in all of my content, not just, you know, not just the music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then, when you when you um putting together something, what usually comes first? Is it like, is it like, oh, this is a message that uplifts people, or is it like, oh, this is this is a hot line, and I'm gonna spit this hot line first, and then it just comes out as probably inspirational later. You know what I mean? Are you talking about with the rhymes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is it is it like, oh, let me focus on the message first, or is it like, oh, this these two words kind of go together and they like super hot, so. Nah, nah, I, 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 my stuff comes from like, um, a moment, you know, um, you know, I, I, I usually write off of what I inspire, auto, off of what I'm inspired by. So usually it starts with something that happened, a video or something, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I use the bit, the video to inspire the music. So, um, you know, like I put out this song called the greeting, like, couple weeks ago yeah. and i started the song the song off grace and peace every species i've been on the quest i've been trying to write my wrongs until there ain't none of them left that was like really what i was thinking i was like man i've been trying to write everything i've done wrong as if i'm going to stop doing the wrong things you know what yeah. i'm saying and so um that was just a thought i had and i just kind of run with the thought it's never like it's really just storytelling you know so yep. you know I, I like so you asked me before am i a christian rapper or am i a youtuber or what am i like what i am in in, in essence is a storyteller so as long right. as i'm telling stories it doesn't matter what the medium is i could be writing a blog i could be taking pictures i could be rapping i could be you know doing video it doesn't matter i'm a storyteller you know what i'm saying and so yeah that, that that's kind of how that all comes from it doesn't come from like Oh, this line's gonna kill him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's it's always like an introspective thought, and and I might I might I'm not like a super bar heavy bar for bar type guy. Yeah, yeah. My yep. stuff is the best part about my rhymes is the flow, like the way I say what I said and how I merge the words together is the best thing I got going for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not necessarily what I said, but how I say it. So what's the limiting part? Like, because if you, if, if it's a point in time that you're, that you're kind of living in that, that, that you rap to, then what's the limiting part about like the whole Christian hip hop scene? What, what's limiting about it? Well, that, you know, man, this is going to be difficult to explain without <laughs> offending a lot of people, you know, if they listen. Um, the limiting part is that, you know, people like, to be a musician can be a very selfish thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but then the way people perceive you is also selfish because they have their own perception. So I, I, I have people that are like, yo, why don't you rap again with this group? You know, why don't you rap again with the Dream Junkies or rap again, rap, 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 because they want me to serve 
their need or whatever yeah, for music. So they want me, right? right? They want me to serve that identity that they have for me, but they won't allow me to be like evolve. Like they don't necessarily care about the YouTube channel. They don't care that I'm doing the fatherhood thing. They don't care that, you know what I'm saying? That bugs me. So yeah. it's like, you want me to do what you want me to do so that I can fit how you see me, not how, like not what God is doing best in me. You know what I'm saying? Like, or doing best through me, like not what's the best thing for my time and my family. You want to be served in this way. So it's mm -hmm. limiting, you know? And then it's like, okay, it's limiting as far as resources is concerned too, because I don't necessarily like getting on stage. I don't like rapping in front of a bunch of people. I get stage fright every single time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so when I do that, there's, there's, you know, it's only so much people can like scream your name to where you don't actually start believing what they're saying. Mm, like eventually you're just going to, you're actually being worshiped at some point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some of that to me seems like the, it seems like the, I hate that. I hate to say it like this too, but it's, it seems like the MO of the church where they just kind of want you to just be one way. And if you kind of deviate from that a little bit, then it's like, they hate you. Like one of the things that I always mention was uh, like, church musicians getting paid and if you're an artist then they feel like if you're doing something in the church then you should you know do it for free and i necessarily <laughs> didn't didn't really believe in that but the church kind of believes in that a little bit you know what i mean yeah so i played piano and i played uh i played keys at church for a little while and i was playing i was playing for free just because well two reasons number one i wasn't the dopest piano player Right, I wanted the I wanted the six hundred dollar a week piano player. I was more like the hundred dollar, eighty five dollar a week a week uh, piano player. So I was feeling guilty, you know, getting a check from him because I'm like, oh, I don't think I'm supposed to be getting paid. I'm doing it for Jesus, you know what I mean, all that kind of stuff. So I always was wondering, like, other artists, how do they feel? Do they feel as guilty as I was feeling? Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's, it's a difference, you know, like, I think some people really do feel that guilt. Hey, pay, the church is going to pay you what you can, what they can, you know? Um, and I think that is fair. And I, and I, like, I don't think the church, like you said before, like you were saying how, you know, the church kind of sees you how they want to see you. And then they kind of like chant you down or at some point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that. I think the church just has to be shown that there are other options. Like, you know, I feel like, the YouTube route is like a very legitimate route of ministry. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The influencer yep. route. Now we see that with, you know, his a case study is Alex Dion Wilson, the guy who runs Insta church, right? Okay. He is amazing. Yo started a church making 15 second videos. Each sermon was 15 seconds or five seconds or whatever. Like the dude is amazing. And he yeah. has a legitimate church on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, it's called Insta Church, right? Yeah. So this guy's like super smart, um, but it's in a very effective way of ministry. Now there's not a lot of community, right? But during a time like this, where the right, where Rona is popping, that is a very effective way to you know get get in touch yeah, with people to get the message across, right? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And so then a church hits you up and they say, hey, like why don't you come do this at our church for you know this amount of money? Now I'm not saying that like. I, I, I don't know anything about anybody else's paper. You know what I'm saying? Um, for me, I definitely had a rough go at it, like trying to be a musician in the church and like survive off of it. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, what, is it because you couldn't find like gigs or they didn't want to pay you? I mean, um, as a group, I could find gigs, but I also wasn't a go-getter. Like I wasn't like the type of guy that was going to, you know, go out and be like, yeah, man, you need to book me. I'm really good. Yeah, yeah. Such, I'm not yeah. like a self-promoting type person. So yeah. um, I just didn't do well in that, in that space. You know what I mean? And then it's like, I'm also not a, I'm not a preacher. I'm not, a, I'm not like a preacher. You know what I'm saying? So they also wanted this like dual thing where someone could minister and rap, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I, I'm not gifted in that way. And so I yeah. found myself trying to, do something that is not for me or of me naturally in order to get a check, which is super sure. fake. You know what I'm saying? And so I kind of had to adjust my heart. And then I'm like in competition with people I love, friends of mine, you know, hating on their success, 
Like it's just a lot of competition, and I just was like, eh, I'm over it. You know, I'm kind of done. Yeah, let's do something else now, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, and it was like, you know, here's another thing that I I really like doing, and I can still rap. You know what I'm saying? I can still drop my little bars here and there, and I don't ever have to leave the house. (laughs) You know? Where you from? Where you live at? Uh, I'm from Cleveland originally. Okay. So born and raised Cleveland, Ohio, uh, east side of Cleveland. Then I moved to Connecticut. I got a, a job like maybe seven, eight years ago. Nice. And I moved to Connecticut. Then I met my wife, who's also from Cleveland. Oh, that's but we cool. We didn't know that until we didn't know that until we got out here. I was like, I'm from Cleveland. She said she's from Cleveland. I'm like, what part of Cleveland? Then she's like, she named a suburb. I was like, oh, you from the outskirts? Yeah, not yeah. Cleveland, Cleveland. Yeah, you yeah, from yeah. <laughs> The other the other side of the bridge, but I thought it worked out good because now we when we go home, like we got all of our family there. We don't have to, you know, spend a night for a week in one city and go to another one. Yeah, how long you been but married? It, um, we got married officially in well September, September just this past this past September. Okay, awesome, man. September fourteenth. So we like super newlyweds. Yeah, man. Congratulations, bro. And are you still working for the job currently? Or are you? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So I'm doubling up right now. You know, awesome. all of the, the the content stuff and all of that. So you're doing very well by night. I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, man, you're doing very well, bro. Because this, because um, and Rachel, wifey, she works, she works full time too. So you know, she's helping me out whenever I need it. But she also puts herself in the not not um not creative category, right? So I try to get her into it. Say, hey, why don't we start something and we do this? And she's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And that got me thinking because, you know, Sean, Sean, um, he runs the, the dad game. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to him. When we were having a conversation and he was like, he was like, bro, it's not, it's not Rachel's like vision. He was like, it's like your vision. So you're the one that got to kind of make her believe it. And I was like, oh, dang, that's dope. And then you just said something like that on a clip that I saw. And then he was like, "Yeah, I got it from I got it from him. I just told you that like a, a a while back." And I was like, "Yo, that's that's dope because I guess he was in a similar position too, right?" Wifey wasn't really into that. Yeah, well, my wife initially was not about what I'm doing. Like she was just kind of like, "I don't get it. You know, this is kind of I don't want my kids out there. I don't want you filming at our house. You don't clean up. You don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't clean." And up. I'm like, "Yo, it's authenticity. You know what I'm saying? Like just let it be." Da 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 da. Um, and basically, you know, when God gives you a dream, it's really nobody else's business. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really nobody yeah. else's, like, your, 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 it's your problem that they don't believe in you. It's not their problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so we got to stop, like, trying to get people to see things that we haven't manifested ourselves. The, the, the problem is, you know, when you have a dream, right, you have an idea. Right. You're like, okay, cool. I got this idea. This is a good idea. Right. And so immediately what you want to do is you want to skip steps. Right. So the, the, the natural progression, when you have an idea, this is how it's supposed to go. Right. Your brain has an idea and gives it to your ability. Right. Whatever your ability is, whatever you're capable, you're able to do, you do that. And then you give that thing that you have made to a person that you trust. Right. So that's three different Mm -hmm. stages. So your brain is the first stage. Your ability is the second stage. And a person you trust is the third stage. That person is going to say that is awesome. Or man, that kind of this kind of trash. Whether you trust them or not has more to do with your relationship between your brain and your ability, not your brain and your person. Right. So. Mm. The, the fourth stage is to give it to your audience, put it out there to the world and the world takes it and does whatever they need to do with it. Right. The fifth stage is to go viral. Everyone loves it. People who never should have had the product, have the product or have seen the product and they're like, oh, this sucks or oh, this is great. What we do as creatives is we want to go from stage one to stage three. Oh, yeah, for sure. We want to go from our brain and say, babe, I got an idea. I'm going to put a saddle on a cat and then put a toy on it and then it's going to go viral because no one's ever done that before. And she's like, what? How are you going to find a cat? We don't even. No, no, no. Listen, listen. I'm going to find a cat and I'm going to put a saddle. You allergic to cats. That doesn't make you're not listening to what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but because your your brain is so familiar with with that 
instant gratification and for people saying, uh, I love it, you haven't you you skipped a step by just doing it. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have yeah, a, your yeah. your brain and your ability have to have a better relationship than your brain in that person. I wonder how long you had to stay in those different stages like that. Like if it's if it's in your head and then how long before you kind of make it your ability and then how long before you communicate to somebody. I feel like that can be like years in between that. It can be or it cannot be. You know what I'm saying? It just depends on when you're ready to release it. Some people don't care. Some people just their iPhone. That's all. That's the only camera they ever had. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they don't care. You know, um, other people have know a lot about cameras you know what i'm saying and they would mm -hmm. they were practice 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 or so learn learn and learn and then be like okay i'm finally ready to release this but the thing is it's like it doesn't really matter what anybody thinks you know what i'm saying besides yeah. yourself if you're okay with putting out you know a pixelated version of whatever you have then put it out like it doesn't matter what i think so many people try to ask me for my opinion <laughs> they'll be like yo what you think it is, man? I want to get your eyes on it. I'm like, it's cool. I, it doesn't matter. I'm not your audience. What do you care what I think? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a distraction to you. You need to put it, give it to your audience because those are the real people who matter, not me. But they want to sign off. Nice. They want to co-sign. They want, you know what I mean? Like, I can't. Yeah, they want to feel good, right? Just like all of us artists, we kind of want people to be accepted, especially people that may be in our same field too, right? Yeah, well, acceptance isn't really an artistry thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I just I feel like most artists are just like, I just want my stuff out there. You know what I mean? Like, I just want it out. I don't care if people like it or hate it. I care. Pe I hope people like it. But if they hate it, that's fine. But I just want it out there. You know what I'm saying? When you talk about acceptance, you're talking about a different motive. So you're actually talking about doing it for the glory of something else. You know what I mean? Mm, you're talking nice. about yeah. you might have like, OK, well, you won't like me if I do this, but what if I do this? You know what I'm saying? So I don't care if a Christian rap fan is mad at me because I don't I don't rap like that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, good, like okay, cool, man. I'm not gonna do that again. That's not who I am. I'm, I'll, I'll evolve. Just like Jay Z when he talks about how, you know, um, if you like my old stuff, buy my old album. Like, I'm not gonna do the old stuff no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, man, I think that you got to be really like a great artist has a great relationship with their ability. It, yeah, it's a trust. It's a trusting relationship. Let's go into this whole marriage life because, you know, I'm, a, I'm low key an amateur at this. All right. So I may be asking questions that are very, very selfish. It may pertain to me and everybody is just listening. To no, that's it. cool, man. You a lot of people I mean? might be in that situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wait, how did y'all how did you and wifey meet? How did y'all meet? I was DJing at a, an event and, you know, she helped me pack up my turntables and take them up and we just were kind of cordial. And then one day, oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and then one day, like two years later, she needed a, her God brother needed the DJ for his wedding. And then she said, she knows a DJ. And so that's when we, we reconnected back in 20, what year was this? 20 so i guess it was 09 09 and y'all got married that year or y'all got, got married in uh 2010 2010 so did you guys have like a like the typical christian relationship you know like wait until you got married and yeah you know all of that kind of stuff yeah yeah we didn't have sex before we got married um yeah like, it, like neither one of you guys did no, so I wasn't a virgin. She was. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, she was a virgin, and I had been abstinent for like four years. Oh, okay. All right. So then when y'all got together, did y'all have like conversations like before, like about like sex and all that? Kind of yeah. Stuff? I mean, w to the best of our ability, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you know, it would become like on our wedding night, we realized she didn't know anything about sex at all. You know what I'm saying? So it was a very like hard journey for us. Um, you know, before we could like get on the same page sexually. You know what I'm saying? So probably like six years. Wait, wait, wait. So 
What do you mean she didn't? What do you mean like on a wedding night? You, she didn't. She didn't know much. anything. <clears throat> she didn't know anything about like she's never been taught like what about anything about sex. Okay, I need you to help me define nothing. Is nothing like <laughs> what is what is nothing? Is it like literally nothing? Or nothing. Is it like a small amount. Nothing. Like, like what what's gonna happen? And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> You know what I'm saying, um, and I'm like, what? so. Th- so then, when that when that happened, like, what were you? <laughs> what was going through your head? Um, I was very impatient. You know, I was kind of like, you need to call somebody and talk to somebody because you know what I'm saying. Like, I've been waiting and I've been da 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 da, and it was all about me. <sighs> and I was very like irritated by like the women in her life. Like, how come you guys didn't? You know what I'm saying? Like, what the heck? When you know what I mean? And so, but at the same time, like. I like from what the conversation we had I was I was led to believe that she knew what she was you know what was you know what the expectation was but you know it I did not so it was very 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 difficult man it was very difficult wow that's interesting because I I don't I feel like I would have felt low key bamboozled I would have probably felt I would say I mean she wasn't like coming on to me a lot before that you know what i'm saying and we were like very like pure so there wasn't a lot of like you know stuff that i would have known you know what i'm saying um but i just i did feel kind of like you know she was very curious you know what i'm saying so you know i'll be like hey man you can't really like we can't really spend this much time together because i'm gonna like fall into a pattern that's going to make me want to have sex. And I'm, I know we don't want to have sex. You know what I'm saying? But she was just kind of yeah. like, well, won't you just like massage my back or something? And I'm like, nah, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of that. Oh, doing. So you were staying away from it all. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was trying to um, because I already knew that with me, it was kind of like, you know, you press that wrong button and I'm like, OK, we're in, we're going in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and I didn't even want to put myself in that position. I will not put her in that position because I know it's not what she wanted. But it, it was a very hard role, man. Um, and I, I guess it like when I started to do the belief in fatherhood stuff, like is when she was like, yo, I can see what the Lord is calling you on, calling you to do in your life and how you're supposed to lead men. And I don't want you to fail because of something that I'm scared to talk about or something mm. that I'm scared to grow in. And mm. so I'm going to do whatever I can do to like learn you know what I'm saying? And so after that, she like read some books and life got a lot better for sure. But you said this was deep in. Did you say like five years, five, six years later, six years later? So then how was you guys relationship within that five years? I mean, because I, I know me and I would have been pretty uh, grumpy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, like I was very patient with, you know, that situation. Um, You know, it get, I guess, you know, she was like shamed like sex was like always talked about as something that you know you did not do and you avoid it at all costs and you eat, don't even talk about it don't ask mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying just don't just keep your legs closed and so it's kind of a little bit of trauma there for her because now all of a sudden she did what she was supposed to do what everyone told her to do which is keep her legs closed and now she doesn't know what to do for her husband you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. she felt more bamboozled than I did. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm just kind of like, hey, like, we got to figure this thing out. But at the same time, not trying to pressure her because it was very uncomfortable for her to talk about, you know? Yeah. Man, so she 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 accepted that. She accepted that she didn't know anything because I would have thought that maybe she would be like, oh, no, 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 we don't do any of that stuff or the the answer is kind of no so she was accepting of it early and just had that phase of trying to work through it is that what it was um it just i don't know i guess you know it's it's just uncomfortable and awkward you know yeah um and she you know she had a lot of, she was working a full she was a teacher you know what i'm saying so you know she's up at like 4 30 out of the house by like 5 30 and she didn't get home till like four and then she mm. grade papers and then you know, so like we didn't have a lot of like time where we were just growing together as people. It was more like we were trying to survive. She was working. I was working, you know, 
and then I was taking care of the kids. You know what I'm saying? And she was taking care of the mm-hmm. kids. Like, it was a lot, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. It was a That's lot of distractions. Okay. It was very rough. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Did y'all do like, um? did you get, try counseling or therapy? Um, what, what, what do you call it? Marital therapy? Well, we had, we had mental, we had a mentor couple. Um, We had a few mental couples, uh, but it wasn't something that we would talk, like, she didn't even want to talk about it with them. You know what I'm saying? Because it's kind of like, I don't want to talk about it with you, but I'm going to talk about it with people who don't live in our house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. so it wasn't something I was fighting for either. Like, I wasn't like, I felt, I guess I felt a little guilty, like, for wanting to to have a better, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I guess, like, my doctrine was like, man, just die to yourself, love your wife, you're going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I was praying, like, Lord, like, what the heck man you know what i'm saying like very like i don't know what i did to deserve this you know what i'm saying um but it wasn't so much about me as it was about me and her you know what i'm saying just if i would have been like listen man like if i would have been having the conversations i think it would have been better but i guess Mm -hmm. i was a little fearful of myself you know what i'm saying yeah i think yeah yeah so so now that you now that you have uh you have just one daughter right Mm mm-hmm so do you think that you're going to like take a different approach with your daughter as far as almost definitely like conversation? I mean, even, yeah. even, even my wife, my wife is like, nah, like she's going to know everything because she feels like she was like, you know, she even, I think on a recent one of her podcasts, she asked her mom, like, why didn't you say anything about any of this? You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. um, I, I haven't listened to the podcast yet, but I know they kind of, that's got, one I kind of want to listen to. I want to hear that. One. Yeah. And so <laughs> I guess she was like, you know, her mom was like, my mom never told me anything. You know what I'm saying? And so that was like the, that is the reason why I create the content I create because I'm tired of that. Like I'm mm-hmm. tired of men walking into fatherhood. Like, well, I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm over it. You know, we can't walk into these spaces blind when these positions in these places are the most important things we will ever do as we breathe. Like, this is it. Like, fatherhood is all there is. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you die, you will leave behind these people. And depending on how hard you worked to get them to understand basic principles about life, you know, tells you how much joy they're going to have, how much how much they're going to try to change the world or for the better, how much they're going to work for the good of others or whatever. Um and motherhood is very much that as well. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. our kids are following us. You know, there are other men following us. There are bro- little brothers and sisters following us, you know? And so we got we to gotta help them transition into fatherhood, into motherhood, into being a husband, and to be a wife. Yeah. So was your father around or was he not around? So my dad had joint custody. So we lived in California, you know, Okay. And uh, with my stepmom and my little sister. Um, so my dad, I would visit him in the summertime. And then around seventh grade, I lived here until like eighth grade. Or sixth, sixth grade, I lived here until like eighth grade. Um, mm-hmm. to Cali. And then I moved back to Baltimore um, with my mom and my little brother. Yep. Yeah. So he was around, you know what I'm saying, to the best of his ability. Mm. You know, he wasn't like a super present, super like present father, but like you know, he taught me how to like, you know, you know, sweep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like shampoo my hair, and like you know what I'm saying? Like, you know how to put a cologne on? Like all you know, little stuff like that. Like yeah, yeah. Um, but like, I I, I don't necessarily know if he taught me. I, I know he didn't, but I don't know if he knew to taught me how to teach me how to think yeah you know which is like one of those things it's like i i I often run drills with my children trying to help them develop their mental like what do you think about this how does this make you feel what do you what is your what is the best option to do here what do you think is the right step you know what i'm saying um first off i think it's interesting how this generation like our generation of 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 fatherhood like I didn't grow up with my dad and a lot of my friends didn't grow up 
with their dads, but I don't necessarily know any guys around me that, that are not around their kids. It's almost like we all got incredibly motivated to be like dope dads and good fathers just because like our dads like wasn't around. You know what I mean? I always thought that that was like incredibly interesting because my, my dad wasn't around at all. I mean, he lived like around the corner pretty much. Yeah, but I think, you know, I, that just speaks to what we're longing for. You know, um, I think what's interesting is that if you look at our fathers did just a little bit better than their fathers or tried to. Did they? Did they? I'm, not sure, did? I'm sure they tried to. I mean, I'm sure if your dad experienced the like a father, I don't know what his experience was, but if his dad was like fighting for him every day and trying to be the best dad he could be, he would be a little convicted. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's crazy. It's like, this is going to suck, but you know, <laughs> our parents are longing for parents like us. Hmm. You know, like they're yeah. watching us in awe. So when you say that you have like these drills that you're like drilling into them, do you, are, is it like a routine kind of thing or kind of whatever comes to your head? How do you know what things to kind of hit on? Do you have like a list of stuff that you're like, all right, you need kindness, this or this, or are you just going by like instinct? No. Um, you know, there's, there's so many teachable moments in every day. You know, it's not, it's all instinct. It's not like, and today we're going to, the subject is joy. And so, you know what I'm saying? We're going to find joy in the moment of sitting quiet, you know? Yeah. Um, I would love to be that organized, uh, but you know, because of the things I do and the stuff I I make, I don't think like that. Uh, yeah. there there's always a lesson to be learned, you know. Um, and and we we just highlight we just make moments out of everything, mm -hmm. you know. If, if my son is asking me a question about, um, you know, why we can do certain things, he can't. You know what I mean? I'll talk to him about seasons and how it's important to enjoy the season that you're in. You know, you're in a season of being a child where you don't have to worry about where your food is, mm -hmm. where your food comes from, how the lights stay on. You don't even know that we pay for lights. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and I'm like, you know, and so they're like, well, I can I can do it. And I'm like, well, how are you going to make money? Go to the store. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that's not how you make money. You know what I'm saying? And so um doing you know doing stuff like trying to help them understand that they have to generate wealth they have to think about how they're spending their time you know it, it's super difficult man you know but yeah. it's what we're called to do for sure what about um what about discipline like when you get down to whoopings and stuff like that like do you do you do whoopings do you believe in whoopings i used to um i don't necessarily believe in them anymore I got one kid that could use it more often. <laughs> um, and I and we really don't do that often. Only when they put um, themselves or a family member in danger. You know, mm. so like um, deliberate disobedience that, you know, endangers our family needs a, you know, like, hey, this is going to be a, a turning of a page here. Um yeah. So I don't, I don't believe in whoopings because I think that it's the easiest way out. It's not the most effective. Yeah. You know, if you spank a kid, you get angry, you spank them, then it's like they can't even, they don't even know why you spanked them. You know what I'm saying? Like they'll just be like, yeah. Um, I don't so what know. About, what about what about like in the in the Bible when they say it's spare the rod, spoil the child? Yeah. Um. I believe there is a I believe that there is a space and a place for firm discipline with spanking, right? Mm. I don't think it's the most effective. And the reason why is because I've sat down and taught my son a lesson about when he does this, this is how it makes me feel. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so after that, he was able to like it took 2 hours. The reason why we spank is because we're, we we spank out of anger and it's easy. You know what I'm saying? But did they actually learn anything? You know what I mean? So I believe that I believe that at this point I could put my son in the plank position and tell him he got two minutes on the plank and that that is the rod. 
it's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. You're gonna feel that burn, you know? And I'm doing it all the time. All right, man, give me a plank. You know, stick your butt, butt down, butt down. Nope, not that, not that far down, higher. Yeah, there you go, there you go. All right, now let's count. You know what I'm saying? And I'll count slow. You know what I'm saying? Or I'll, or I'll just be like, I'll tell Google to, you know, set a timer for whatever. And, and they'll be crying. You know what I'm saying? You know, like it doesn't help me that you're sneaky. Like it doesn't, you know? And so, yeah, I don't necessarily believe it's the most effective way to, to, do, to do life with someone else. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I used to believe in whoopings, I think, until I probably had a kid and I figured out. And, and you know, Taj is only two, too, so he's not like of real like whooping age, but he do get he do I do utilize this uh yeah this middle finger pop, you know. Yeah, pop pops <laughs> you know I mean? is yeah, pops is all, all day thing. And pinches, <laughs> pinches, pinches. Yeah. Rachel actually just started pinching a little bit. They hate that stuff. That's a, that, I feel like that's worse than whoopings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, getting, getting pinched. Um, I have this scenario I want to I want to run you through since you're in this unique position where your business is like your family and your family yeah. is your business and it's all wrapped up in the same situation. So if you're in a situation where, you know, wifey is a little, you know, pissed off or y'all just had an argument, but you know, it's Tuesday or Wednesday and you gotta upload some content. How do you how do you manage that if she's like in a bad mood or she's pissed off or something? But you need her for like the content what what happens nothing you just don't make content no be, so you just yeah because our relationship is more important than the content or the brand deal i just tell them hey we're gonna be late um and people can see through that that fakeness mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know a lot of times like my wife and i had like a five hour discussion today um just about where we're at the goals that we have are we on the same page and it really took a lot out of me to where i was like i don't feel like creating anything and i can't you know what i'm saying so i did like home improvement work i made some shelves in the garage i did not do what i was supposed to do today i, I you know i and this has been happening daily you know what I'm saying? It's been hard for us to get on the same page. And so I'm not in like a space where I think most people, and this is this is kind of concerning and it bugs me about myself, but I'm not in the, I don't, I'm not of the belief that, you know, I'm in competition with other fathers. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like other dads like you, LaGuardia, as said by me, Sean from Dad Gang, like you guys are not my competition. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if I believed that, then I would just make the content and just tell her to smile for the camera because we have to get the content out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know, I think uh, I think people have different goals. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is your goal as you're making this stuff? Like, what is your, what is your end all be all goal? Well, for me, I just wanna be a content creator you know, make videos for people. I own a, a media company now outside of like my, my nine to five. So I can make content for a lot of people. But my nice. thing is, is I kind of want to just make content kind of for me. I want to do that because that's what really motivates me, right? If I'm sitting in front of, um, you know, a CEO of a nonprofit or something and ask them X amount of questions, it just doesn't, it's just a little boring to me, right? Yeah. So I want to use the skills that I have to make the content that, you know, I want to make for other people. So, right. so that's my, that's like my next, that's like my next step. Just get an audience where I can make content for. And then from there, I'll figure out kind of what doors those open. And I know during that time, you know, the brand deals and all that stuff will come and, and, and supplement. Then I can figure out the next step kind of after that. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you mine, right? So mm -hmm. my, my goal for starting this, like when I first started this, I was like, man, It'd be cool that if like I got shot by the police, that my kids would have more than just photos and albums, but they would have mm -hmm. like these movies they could look back on. And maybe since no one else is going to teach them how to be a dad, maybe I could talk to them through the videos and teach them mm, what okay, I'm what, what I'm learning. So the audience for the for the for the content isn't the audience. It's my children. I hope that they are the ones watching this in 30 years. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. Um, in addition, my main, my my final goal, right, is like someone else's. We want to hit a million subscribers. My goal is to die with less fathers being deadbeats than, you know what I'm saying? Like more fathers being present than because of something I did. Mm, so okay. my goal is the grave. That's why I can't compete. <laughs> like that's why it doesn't matter if I post tomorrow. It matters if me and my wife are on the same page because that's more important. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope that doesn't seem morbid. No, no, it's not morbid at all. It's actually, I mean, it, it makes me kind of rethink, not not rethink, but just kind of re-answer. Because I think when you ask a question like that, I'm looking at it two ways, just from a, yeah, you know, living living the life kind of kind of scenario, which is the answer that I kind of gave. Like, and yeah. you know, like what I want to do when I want to wake up, want to make up, make content. But honestly, yeah, the same thing. I want to make stuff that's better than pictures that I can kind of leave ties. I want him to be, you know, 20 years old and scroll back and be like, Oh dang, this is what happened. I pulled off the toilet paper off the, <laughs> yeah. you know, out the bathroom and did all of this stuff. Like that's initially where it stemmed from when, even when I started the channel, it wasn't like, Oh, I can be a uh, whatever. I'm like, man, I'm about to do this thing to ties and he probably will never know. But if he goes back to this medium, then he'll look at it and then I'll be 80 years old. And I'll be like, yeah, that's what I did right there. Yeah, so yeah, that, cool. that is, that is, that is the motivation behind it. I think a lot of the guys I talked to, that's their motivation too. They didn't, you know, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a monetizable thing initially. Right. You, you were right. trying to monetize your family. It just happened to go that way, you know, during your journey. Yeah. 100%. And, that, and that's a byproduct. So what happens is, man, we, we are, we are fighting for symptoms. You know, we are fighting for, Oh man, if we can hit a, if I can hit a million or if I can do this or if I can go viral, like those are just sim symptoms of productivity. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if those are real goals. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. You know what? That's dope because um I think you played it real cool when um that one clip of you and your daughter went like dumb dumb viral when you put the bow on her head. Yeah. You played that real smooth because it was like, "Oh, this is content that we make all the time." I wasn't trying to go viral when there's tons of people that just try to go viral so they'll do something outside of what they do because and they try to outdo to the, themselves yep yep and they're trying to play to the audience <clears throat> yeah but but you when people like came to your page they realize oh you do stuff like this all the time yeah and that's and that's that's what happens man um like i don't know man like though like i'm not thirsty you know what i'm saying like i don't <laughs> Look, we're going to be doing this all the time. They were like, okay, so now all you got to do is keep showing Anaya. Just put Anaya in the forefront and then you'll just keep going. Like, nah, I'm not finna do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, then I'm going to yeah. be at her at her every beck and call. Hey, baby, you want some bacon? Sure. Let's, let's make this video. I'll give you some bacon. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, you know. Um, we, you know, yeah, man. Like, I, 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 you know, a lot of people hit us up, man. Even, even Ellen. Ellen's like whatever like team mm -hmm. hit us up and yep. was like hey you know like we really want to da, da 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 well are you an Ellen fan or not yeah, I'm like yeah <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> like I am you know what I mean but I'm not like I'm not gonna like front and act like you know like I die for you know what I'm saying for an opportunity to be on the Ellen show because it yeah. like our goals are different you know what I'm saying like and it's not like I'm not trying to be prideful or like arrogant, but it it really comes a place comes from a place of like, man, I really do know who I am and I know what I'm doing f this for. Like I know what I'm doing this for, and this has yeah. very little to do with the accolades that come along with, you know, being thirsty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. And not to say that you're wrong if you're just out here trying to pop. Like, good for you. I just I know from a hip hop standpoint, all them dudes who were like you know were heavy into whatever fad was out when it was jerking it was jerking you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying like when that was the style them dudes did not last long yep. you know what i'm saying and so like the virality don't last long you know it's it's a moment it's a pop yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah man that, that that's and <laughs> remind me of me because rachel tells me i'm like too nonchalant about stuff and when i when i'm talking to people you know she says, well, you don't necessarily sound like you want it. 
you know, and it, and, and maybe that's like a corporate America th- thing when you're like, oh, yes, sir. No, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you really like that. Whereas me, I'm like, oh, I kind of go with the flow. And I think people kind of get the wrong impression when I when I talk like that, and when I do things like that. And that sounds that sounds like pretty much what you just said. Yeah. And I don't like that about myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wish I was more like, yippee, let's do this. You know what I'm saying? But like, I just, just not me. You know what I mean? And I'm very kind of like, yes, yes, we can do this. Or yeah, that's, that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm not like going to do whatever because I like, I know, I know what the goal is. You know what I'm saying? So I'm very grateful for every single opportunity we have, man. We've done some amazing things. You know what I'm saying, and and we have that movie coming out in June with with Bryce Dallas Howard with, with dads. You know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and yep. my family and I are gonna watch it tomorrow night. We haven't seen it yet, but they're gonna let us see it before it comes out. You know, yep. Um, like we've had some amazing opportunities, and even when they hit us up for the movie, they were like, "Hey, so we really want to cast you for this movie. We think you'd be great." Da 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 da. And I'm on the phone with Bryce Dallas Howard, right? And I'm like, "Yeah, we'll see. I'm kind of busy." <laughs> kind of busy <laughs> and Walter the, the producer's like you know this is going to be like an official film like a real documentary like a full on full length documentary and I was like yeah man but you know like I gotta take care of my family you know what I'm saying so like we'll see if we have time and that was it that's, that's wild somebody can hear that and be like oh yeah yeah he needs to be a little bit more assertive yeah yeah but the thing is is like you know, when I was doing hip hop, I got PTSD from that, bro. You know how many people walked up to me and told me like, "Yeah, man, let me see, let me get one of your CDs, man." My cousin Stevie Wonder, and walked <laughs> off like they was going give me, like they was the plug. You know how many times I've been sold a bag of goods, bro? Nothing in that joint. Like I've been lied to, man. Right, right. So I'm like, man, I don't trust y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, who, who? How, how do I know this is who I'm supposed to be talking to? He's okay, Bryce. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> whatever. You know what I mean? And yeah, man, like it is so deep, bro. Like it's down in the core. So I'm not really I don't know. I got to do better though. You right. Well, bro, this is me too. And I'm only saying this because Rachel has been my mirror over the last, you know, couple years let me know this kind of thing, right? And yeah. I and I'd be wondering like like when somebody comes into a room, like a like a famous person or something, I'm like, why don't I get those same feelings that other people get? Like, oh, like Jay Z just walked in a room. Like a certain part of me is like, oh, dang, that's Jay Z or that's that's whoever. But that that I don't know if it's called fandom or that anxiety that people get when when certain people walk around. I just don't necessarily get that kind of thing, and I and I almost feel bad that I don't get that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I mean, but that, that plays to your strength, though, you know? Like, I don't really feel like you need that. Like, that's for other people to get excited. You know, yeah, what I happens? You see Jay-Z, what are you going to do? What are you going to say to him? I, I was once hanging out with, um, I'm not even going to say a person's name, but I was hanging out with a homie, and we were at, like, we were at, like, a festival, and Jay-Z is, like, he, like, fought to get, like, like, I'm the type of person, like, man, if I ain't get an invite, I ain't going. This guy is like, I'm going to sneak in and I'm going to be in the same room as these people because I might just be able to rhyme for them and I, you know, I get signed. And I'm like, man, you going through a lot just to get on, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever, you know what I mean? And so I'm there, I'm like talking and I'm sleeping and I'm laying in the bed and he's calls me, yo, I'm, I'm in the room with Jay-Z. He's about to walk past me. What should I say? I'm like, man, I don't know. And he calls one of the homies and they're like, ask him why he wore that, like, like like that Christian shirt one time. What? And he did what the like what are you gonna say to Jay Z? You know what I'm saying? Like all you you're not gonna say nothing to the dude. You're not gonna say nothing to impress him. Like, I don't really got nothing to say. You know what I'm saying? Like I've seen what you do. Good job. I'm gonna do what I gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah. I don't know, man. Like Yeah, man. You don't you don't you don't look at it like it's a missed opportunity? To, to say something to this person that can change the trajectory of your 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 mission absolutely not I mean I don't <laughs> I don't really I don't, I don't I'm not the I'm not that dude who could just say a one-liner and it just be like oh my gosh man that dude 
Like, what are you gonna say to Jay freaking Z that's gonna impress him? Like, he he rhymes all the time. Like, he says so many dope things. Why would what you say be impressive? That's one thing. And it's two. It's like, why don't you just work your butt off? Why don't you just work hard? And then one day you'll actually be in the same room as him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I honestly, yeah. I honestly believe that, bro. Like, I honestly believe that. You know, like. At one point, like, it was a dream to meet Kev on stage. You know who that is? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, familiar. it was like, yo, man, if we got to hang out with them, that'd be amazing. Like, we literally kick it with them, and we've been in commercials with them. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, all we have to do is continue to work. Like, it's not really, and then it's kind of like, we'll just be hanging out. <laughs> you know? My wife was like, yo. When she started to like buy into what we were doing, she's like, maybe one day we can meet Will Smith. I was like, man, that'd be dope. I was like, or I put it to you like this. Like last, like two years ago, she's like, maybe one day we can go to Disney World. No, no, she was like, babe, I want to get Disney World passes because we haven't been. We should just plan a trip. I was like, babe, we're going to get an opportunity to go to Disney World for free the next month. Someone hit us up. It's like, hey, we want to fly you out to Disney World, and you know what I'm saying. And That's then they sent us back. Tw- they sent us back again. You know what I'm saying. We got paid. <laughs> we got to bring like, like our whole family plus three people, oh, yeah. and we got to r- get front front of line passes twice. You know what I'm saying. And she was like, okay, babe, maybe one day we could meet Will Smith. Now we haven't met Will Smith, and we we don't have any option to meet Will Smith, but he is in the movie that's coming out in June. Like with mm-hmm. we're in the movie, he's in the movie. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's only a matter of time. Just work, man. Like just work your butt off. That's it. I like all I want to do. I want time to to tinker. I want time to think. I want time to dream and create. That's it. Yeah. You know what I think people do too. Last thing I know we've been on here for a minute, but um, I think people tend to network. They try to like jump too high, kind of when they network, right? Because they'll be like. A Will Smith. Oh, if I get in a room with Will Smith, you know, this is what I'm going to be able to do. When in actuality, I mean, talking to people that are at your level probably gets you there a little faster, right? Because you got the little stepping stones, right? I talked to somebody that has the same kind of audience as me, the same kind of following. We have the same kind of mindset. We collab, make something dope. And then we get to another level and we keep doing stuff like that. And eventually, like you said, I mean, your, your paths cross, right? Yeah, I, and I also think if you, I feel like that's entitlement to make you think that, you know, like I'm, <laughs> like Black Thought, right? My favorite rapper, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he's he's my favorite rapper just because you know I feel like when he says words, like he says it with so much conviction, it feels like the words were created for him to say at that moment. Like that's mm. what I love about that dude. So, somebody hit me up like, "Yo, Belief, you're my favorite rapper. Can you get on a track with me?" And I'm like, now, if I had the audacity to ask Black Thought to get on a record with me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just too much of a, like, pay your dues type of guy. You know what I mean? Like, just work your butt off and maybe he'll ask you to hop on the track. But they asking me to hop on a track for, like, 50 bucks. You're my favorite rapper. Like, first of all, I'm not your favorite rapper. Don't tell me that. You know what I'm saying? And if I was your favorite rapper, you definitely wouldn't offer me $50. You know what I'm saying? Like, that barely pays, pays for diapers and wipes. Like, you're bugging out. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't do that. And so, I feel like people don't really want to work for that opportunity, that situation. I don't think people really want it like that, you know? Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Belief is a very, very interesting guy. has a lot of perspectives, a lot of information, on a lot of different stuff. Make sure you guys go follow Belief on Instagram and YouTube. And while you are there, make sure you subscribe and follow me, D. Anthony at The Dad Vlog. And I will see you next time. Dad Vlog. Oh, so you a chip off the old block. Looking at you, got me thinking about my old pops. How I'm going to navigate and get you through the roadblocks. You went from diaper change, poo-poo to potty train. Whoa. Come and talk to me, I got a lot of game. Whoa. Smile like your mama, but we look the same. Whoa. Talk all week, but somehow that that sound like music to me. Like that 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 that.